Lesson 8.3b, finding a percent of a number. We now know that a ratio can be written as a fraction, and a percent is equivalent to the ratio of a part to a whole. To find a percent of a number, we can represent the percent as a ratio. We can write the percent as a fraction and find an equivalent ratio that compares the part to the whole. In the first part of this lesson, 8.3a, we had the problem 28% of 300 t-shirts Dave sold had long sleeves. We wanted to find how many were long sleeves. And we write the percentage as a fraction, a ratio, with 100 as its denominator. We ask ourselves 100 times something is 300, so we know it's a 3. We need to multiply the numerator by the same thing, and we find out that that's 84. 300 is the whole amount of the t-shirts sold. It's of 300 t-shirts that he sold. And we multiply by the same factor as the denominator to find the unknown part. We can find the percent of a number by using proportional reasoning. 28% of 300, by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same number, the ratio 84 three hundredths is in proportion to 28 hundredths. We can also use multiplication. We think of is telling us to multiply. We have 28% of 300. We think 28 hundredths times 300. We can write the 300 over a 1 so we can multiply straight across. And we can use cross-canceling. If you remember from video 4.1a, for 300 we have three hundreds here, so we cross it out and make that a 3. And we have 100 here, so we cross it out and make a 1. Now we have 28 times 3 over 1, and that's 84. That's our part. We can also find the percent of a number with multiplication by a decimal. 28% is 0 0.28, and we can multiply that by 300, and we have two decimal hops in the problem, so there's going to be two decimal hops in the product, and we get an 84. So here's another example of using proportional reasoning. We need to find 75% of 20. We write a proportion comparing the ratio of part to whole. We're looking for the part. And we can say something over 20 is equal to 75 over 100. We find the multiplication factor. 20 times 5 is equal to 100, so this needs to be multiplied by 5 to equal 75. We find the numerator, and if you think, division is the opposite. It's the inverse of multiplication. So to find something times 5 to equal 75, we can do 75 divided by 5. That's going to give us a 15. We know the part is 15. Now we can also check this with cross products. If you have these two ratios in proportion to each other, you should be able to multiply the numerator of the first one to the denominator. We're going to get 1,500. Then we can multiply the denominator of the first one to the numerator of the other one, and we should get 1,500. If we get the same product, they're in proportion to each other. So the way cross products work, is if we have 1 third equals 2 6 and we want to make sure that's right, we multiply 1 times 6, which is 6, and 3 times 2, which is 6. And if we get the same number, we both they both have a 6 here, that means they are in proportion to each other. Here's another example of multiplying by a fraction. We write the percent as a fraction with 100 as its denominator and we multiply and simplify. We can write the 60 as a 60 over a 1. That's the whole amount. We're looking for the part. And we have 20 hundredths times 60 over 1. We've got 20 times 60, which is 1,200, and 100 times 1, which is 100. We can simplify this by dividing both the numerator and denominator by 100. We get a 12 over a 1, which is equal to 12. We know 20% of 60 is 12. Here's another example of multiplying by a decimal to find 2% of 350. 
we think, well, 2% is 0 0.02. So we're going to multiply 0 0.02 times 350. That's the whole. And when we do, we see there's two jumps in the equation. So there's going to be two jumps in the product. It's equal to 7. And that's the missing part. Another example for those of you who need it. We have 6% of 50. That means multiply 6% by 50. And we can write 6% as a 6 over a 100. And we're going to multiply it by 50 over 1. And we can use cross-canceling. We have a 50 here. We cross it off and say there's one 50 here and there's two 50s here. And we make that a 2. Now we're doing 6 times 1 over 2 times 1. We get 6 halves. And we can simplify this by dividing the numerator and denominator by 2, and we find the missing part is 3. We can also do it as a decimal. We have 6% of 50. We're going to multiply 50 times 0 0.06. And we have two jumps in the equation. There's two jumps in the product. We get 3 as our missing part. Now, there's a link in this description to video 4.1a about cross-canceling. If you use cross-canceling, you're going to go much faster. Otherwise, you would have had 300 over 100. And yes, that's easy numbers. We could have simplified that. But sometimes it'll take you a while to simplify it. If you do the cross-canceling, you're simplifying it as you're doing the problem. It's quicker. So we finished this lesson. And we learned how to find a missing part. In 8.3c, we're going to find a percent when we know the part and the whole. I know this can be confusing for some of you, but hopefully my colors will help clear up any confusion. I'll see you next time. Bye.